Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to do a gear load out of all the stuff I took with me on the West Highland Way. So on this trip I try to travel pretty light to be honest. I've had a few uh, mishaps carrying heavy backpacks over the years so I tried to kind of whittle down the weight as much as I could and I managed to get my base weight down to 7.8 kilograms. So the base weight is the weight of the gear excluding food, water and fuel. And I found that to be a, a really manageable weight. You know, I didn't really struggle with the pack at all. So let's go through the gear. So first of all, we've got the backpack that I used. Uh, it doesn't look like a traditional backpack, it's, I guess you would call it an ultra light pack. It's a, a Gossamer Gear Mariposa 60. It's got a 60 litre capacity uh, and it weighs just 904 grams. I'll not talk too much about it because there's plenty of reviews on YouTube. But I found it really comfortable and uh, the fact that it's, it weighs kind of less than a kilogram was, uh, was welcome on such a long trek. So I definitely recommend the Mariposa 60. Now Trace, my wife, she used uh, another Gossamer gear pack. This is a, I think it's called a G42 or something. And she loves it. She uses this all the time now. Uh, and I think this weighs less than 700 grams. It's just, I think it's 42 litres capacity. Now we did bump into a couple of ultralight backpackers on the West Highland Way who were both carrying a base weight of 4.5 kilograms. And they both used this backpack. So I think if you're on your own, this one's worth having a look at. Now I split the rest of the gear up into different categories. I, I had camping, cooking, clothing and miscellaneous. And that allowed me to kind of look over those four different categories and try and save as much weight as I could. So let's have a look at the camping gear. There was two of us on this trip. So we, we had to take a, a big enough tent. So I took an MSR. Freelight 3 2022 version. It's lightweight, it's roomy. On the downside, it's an inner pitch first tent and in Scotland it rains a lot. So we did get soaked on a couple of occasions. It's not a good tent for exposed conditions as I found out recently in the Cairngorm Mountains. But along the West Highland where there's not too many exposed areas, unless you plan on camping on top of the Devil's Staircase or up on the way out of Kinloch Laven or somewhere like that. But I would definitely take it again with me. I did take a ground sheet with me. These ultralight tents, they do have very thin um, bathtubs on them. So I took a, a Tyvek sheet, which is basically a building material. It's dirt cheap, pretty light, very water resistant and pretty tough. It's kind of bulky, but uh, I think this cost me £6.50 or something and it works pretty well. Now, moving on to the sleep system, I took a I guess you'd call it a, a summer sleeping bag with me. This is the Mountain Equipment Helium 250 down bag. It's a, it's a pretty expensive bag actually, but I was lucky enough to get it uh, on half price. Um, now, I think this has a comfort rating of around eight degrees and Mountain Equipment claim it will keep you warm or you'll get a good night's sleep at one degrees. And I found it, to be honest, I was too warm some nights along the West Highland Way. But you've just got to be careful really with the weather we had it fairly mild, but the year before, uh, just to add, we went at the end of April, beginning of May. But at the same time, the year before, last year, they had uh, the coldest uh, spring in Scotland for 25 years. And the temperature got down to minus six at night. So you've got to kind of look ahead, really, if you're going in the, in the shoulder season. Most people tend to do the hike in April or May, so you can avoid the midges, but can get cold. I found this was adequate. I do use a, a silk sleeping bag liner as well. I'm not really sure if it adds any more uh, temperature rating to the bag, but it just keeps it clean inside. And I used uh, a Seat to Summit Aeros Ultralight Pillow. Now, I took my winter sleeping pad with me, which was perhaps a bit of a, an overkill. It's a Symat Hyperlight Winter, the long and wide version really comfortable it's like nine centimeters thick it's uh it's got a really high r rating i think it's rated down to minus 20 but it was a bit of an overkill but it's comfortable and it definitely helped keep me warm 
Now I did take a chair with me as well. We use these little ultralight skyline stills from Big Agnes. I find them really comfortable. They haven't got a back on them, but it, honestly, it just doesn't bother me. They weigh just over half a kilo, and uh, I think it's worth bringing one along, but a lot of people don't bother with a chair. I've also got these little chair buddies, which I could have left these at home, really. They just kind of clip onto the bottom of the of the legs of your stool or your chair to stop you sinking into the grass. I think I only used them the once. Now, with the Exped mat, you kind of blow it up with the, one of these schnozzle bags, they call them. They've got this little uh, adapter at the end, which you put onto the bag and then, you know, you know what you can do with these. You fill them up and you blow your bag up. But I also use this as a, a bag liner for my backpack. So I would just put this in first in the morning before I started packing up. Then everything went in here. You can just seal the top like a normal dry bag and uh, just kept the entirety of uh, the backpack dry. So that's all the camping gear. So we'll have a look at the cooking gear next. So we just took a fairly simple cook kit with us. We were using mainly uh, rehydrated or freeze dried foods. So I wasn't, I didn't really bring like a pot to cook in if you know what I mean. I was just boiling up water. So I used uh, an Evernew Titanium 900ml mug pot, I think it's called. Incredibly expensive. Uh, very nice though, Japanese made. It weighs under 100 grams and the titanium's pretty thin as well so it boils water really quickly but I definitely wouldn't like to try and cook in it or, or even heat soup up. I think it would just get stuck to the bottom. But uh, if you just want to boil water, it's a cracking little bit of kit. You can obviously get cheaper ones, you know, if you go on Amazon, you can get like the Torx brand or what have you. Nice lightweight titanium uh, mug pots. Now the burner I used was the, the Soto Windmaster with the Tri-Flex grip, which uh, it does come with like a big four pronged uh, stand on top, but you can just get this little lightweight one which just kind of clips on and it all just clips up and falls down, fairly compact as well. It does have a little ignition on it, but it's a bit uh, hit and miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I do carry a, a little lighter with me as well, just in case it doesn't work. Now, one of the downsides of the uh, the Avenue pot is that when you, you're boiling water, the handle can sometimes get really hot. So I've got a little JSI pot grip, just to, just, just to lift it on and off. It's got a little magnet in it as well, so you can kind of stick it to your gas canister. Look at that. Um, I also brought along with me uh, a Snow Peak Titanium 300ml mug, an Opinel number no. 7 knife, just in case you know you wanted to buy any any fruit or salad or anything to, to slice stuff up with. There's a little um, gas canister stand here, a seat to summit, long handled plastic spoon, and a bowl. Now I did actually on, on, that, on the West Highland where I did take with me the um, Trangia 27 balls, a couple of aluminium balls from there, but I've since bought this titanium snow pig one which is like half the weight. Uh, I like snow pig stuff. It's not that expensive, it's, you pay a few pounds more than the, um, the stuff that you can buy from China, but this is all made in Japan, it's all pretty good quality. Uh, when it comes to water, we took the, the Catterdon B3 water filter. I definitely recommend this over the Soya mini filter. It's, uh, it's got a decent sized wide mouth on the bottle there, easy enough to collect water from streams or from a lock. And the flow rate on it is really, really good. You literally just turn it upside down, squeeze it and off you go. I found with the um, the Soya mini filter, you can, be, you can be there for days, months even, trying to get half a litre of water. So I definitely recommend that. Now I also took with me a, a Hydropack stash. This is a 750ml bottle. Now I only took this with me in case I fancied some wine on the evening as I was passing through one of the villages. 
So on a number of occasions, we went and picked up a bottle of red wine. We decanted it into here, uh, you know, recycled the, the glass bottle and off you go into the hills without having to worry about carrying around a heavy glass bottle. And if you're not using it, it just folds up like that. And it doesn't take up much room in your pack. So that's the Hydro Pack stash. I think that's about it. Well, I took um, I took a gas bottle this size with me, which I think it's uh, 220 grams. And that was more than enough for the, uh, I mean, we were out there on the trail for, I think, eight days, seven nights and eight days. And we used this, what, three or four times a day. And I uh, still came back with gas. So I think that's all you need, really. Now, when it comes to the food, yeah, we just stuck with them. Um, basically just boiling up water to make our meals with. I mean, there are a number of cafes and restaurants along the way where you can stop in for lunch, but we did find that a lot of the restaurants required um, you to book in advance. So it's a bit hit and miss if you just want to turn up and get an evening meal. But we, I think we had six nights worth of food with us, which uh, worked out pretty well, especially if you plan on wild camping, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, where you're going to go for, for dinner. You just put your tent up and, you know, crack on with your lunch. So we used these uh, these freeze-dried meals. I tend to stick with the, the real Termath. They're a little bit you know more costly than other brands, but really nice. And the Summit to Eat are pretty good as well. Now what I've done, because they're, they're kind of bulky, you know, in these big packs. So I just opened them up and decanted them all into uh, just little freeze bags. So my food bag, even though we had you know, six days worth of food, it was only about that big and it didn't weigh that much. So for breakfast we just had porridge. You know, I just made this uh, porridge mix up beforehand. I've got like ground coconut in here, uh, dried fruit, raisins, nuts, seeds, a lot, uh, milk powder. So you just whack a lot of boiling water on that. You, know, you don't need to cook it, you just kind of put a load in your bowl, whack a load of water in it and uh, leave it for five minutes and, and off you go. And then for lunch, just you know, keep it easy, cup of soup with some beef jerky. So that worked pretty well to be honest. Yeah, so that's the cook kit. It's all pretty lightweight. I think um, it comes in at under 500 grams for, for the pot, the stove and, and all the bits and bobs. So yeah, pretty useful. So when it comes to clothing, the first thing you want to pack is a, a waterproof jacket. This is just a, a Berghaus Gore-Tex shell. And a pair of waterproof trousers are a good idea as well. These are um, Gore-Tex Berghaus pack light, I think they are. Pretty lightweight. I think most people end up using the waterproofs at some point or another along the West Island way. And then um, obviously you're going to have a pair of hiking trousers and a, a mid layer. I took this, I think it's a Montane hoodie, fleece, but any kind of fleece or even like a, a woolen jumper will do as a mid layer. And then as a, a jacket for the evenings, because it, it does get chilly sometimes, I've got this Rab, I think it's, a, I think it's called Alpine or something, um, down jacket. I mean, it's not, it's not a winter down jacket, but it's, it's adequate for, you know, for springtime for those chilly evenings. And I did bring with me a, a wool beanie as well. A wool hat, I did use that. And some, some Polar Tech gloves. I didn't bring any waterproof gloves or anything or any thicker gloves, uh, just these ones. They, they will keep your hands warm in the wet as well. These ones are made by Montaigne, but you can get a number of different brands. Now I did take a, a midge net with me but it was a waste of time because the midges weren't out. I took a buff. Now I found this useful to wear over my eyes actually because it can be uh, quite light you know especially if you go through the, the summer months and instead of taking like an eye mask you can just kind of <laughs> you know put one of them over your eyes. You can also use to keep your head warm and that while you sleep. Now for for the evenings or to go to sleep, and I took a pair of these merino uh, long johns. 
Now I didn't really wear them that much, but I would still probably take them again just in case you, you know, your hiking trousers get wet and you want to sit in the tent on the evening if it's raining outside. You can put something like this on. Um, and I also took a long sleeved t-shirt for bed as well. Now, top tip here is just don't take any cotton like this t-shirt I've got on now. The, the, not very good for, for out when you're backpacking if you sweat, they get wet, they take ages to dry, they're heavy. These kind of um, polyester mix or, or a merino wool mix, uh, technical uh, t-shirts and what have you, they're much more user friendly when you're out and about I think. I also took some just some cheap flip-flops with me as well. Along the way sometimes we would just get the chairs out and have lunch and it's it's good to take your shoes and your socks off and just let your feet air for a while. Um, and I had this I had I did bring along some extra spare clothes with me in this little osprey packing cube it's called. Now I'll just show you what we had in here. Now the funny thing is I went round the entire West Highland Way and I just wore one t-shirt. This one here, which it's a merino wool mix one from Go Outdoors. And I wore it for the entire hike. Halfway through, we stopped at a campsite. I just took it in the shower with me, washed it, uh, rang it out, it dried overnight, and I was ready to go again the next day. So that's the advantage of, um, you know, these kind of technical clothing that you can buy these days. It dries quick so you can just wash it as you go. Um, it's the same for boxer shorts as well. I took two pairs with me of these. I've actually bought some more as well. I was that impressed with them. These are Rab Force boxes. They cost about £20 a pair. And uh, you know, you're not going to wear them every day because they'll probably just disintegrate because they're made out of um, a mix of merino wool and polyester, I think. But you can just wash them. You, know, you can wear a pair for a day or two wash them on the evening, they'll be dry again by the morning especially in somewhere like Scotland, it rains a lot but it's also windy so I did carry an extra two t-shirts with me which I, you know, I could have uh, I could have left them out but I guess most people, you know, you kind of you get to Fort William and you've got to get a train back to, to Glasgow and if you've been sleeping in a wet tent for a week you're going to stink so you do want like you do want to take a change of clothes with you, but these kind of lightweight things, you know, they're probably worth worth taking along anyway, even if you don't use them, you know, just in case. I took a spare pair of socks with me. Oh, there's another pair of them wrap boxes. Yeah, so I took two pairs of them. Um, I took some seal skins waterproof socks. Didn't use them. They are pretty heavy. Could have left them at home. And then I took a pair of lightweight shorts with me just in case my trousers got absolutely, you know, kind of done in along the, the way and I could wear these on the train back home. Yeah, so I could have, uh, you know, could have been a bit more streamlined with the clothing, but it worked out pretty good in the end. So I think we're almost done and we'll just have a look at the, the miscellaneous stuff. I also took a cap with me as well. So one of the miscellaneous stuff, we had a, a first aid kit. Now in here we've got painkillers, antiseptic wipes, tweezers, which you can use for tick removal, uh, plasters, um, anything else? No, I think that's about it. We did have some of these Compede uh, blister plasters in and that little Compede rub, which is really good as well. You can use Vaseline, you know, just rub it on the, the hot spots where you think you're gonna get hot spots as you walk. It reduces the friction and thus reduces the chance of getting a blister and also uh, a little Nivea lip balm you need to take one of these with you especially in Scotland there's a lot of wind sunshine and damage your lips now we did take a little trial with us in case uh, you need to go for a for a dump this is uh, the deuce the <laughs> deuce number two ultralight trial Weighs 16.7 grams, so it's a lot lighter than those big orange ones you get. It uh, works pretty well. Obviously, you need to take some toilet paper with you as well. But that's that. And then I took a pair of sunglasses with me. You know, on the rare occasions, I think I used them twice. 
also a, a little head torch, which I was in two minds whether or not to bring a head torch because um, in spring and summer it's, it's light for you know most of the evening. But this is a little Petzl one, it's just very small. But it's just uh, good enough, you know, in case you need to get up in the night if it's windy and you, you've got to go and secure your guy lines or something like that. You've got a little, uh, little emergency light there. It's tiny, weighs nothing. And then finally, the last thing was my wash kit. So these bags are made by a chap on eBay. I'll put a little link to his eBay shop. And in here, just got a very basic wash kit. I've got a towel, which is a gram count, a medium towel. I mean, look at the size of this. I've got bigger tea towels than this. But it's just enough, you know. I mean, we had, we stopped at campsites, you go for a shower, you can dry your entire body on one of these. There's no need to fetch along some massive kind of beach towel. And uh, if it gets wet, you can just tie it to your backpack as you're hiking along and it'll dry, ready for your next shower. And then um, I just took a tube of toothpaste and a little travel toothbrush and a small bottle of that uh, multi-purpose soap that you can buy. I think it's Life Venture multi-purpose soap. I only used half of the little bottle here and you use this to wash your face in the morning and you know, do any washing up you might need to do uh, wash your hair shower gel does everything so that's it um, yeah that's the entire kit so that's all the gear that we took with us on the west highland way so if, uh, if anyone's still watching this uh, thanks for watching hope you found the video useful and i'll catch up with you again in the next one